concerning sickness and disease of, right. and and praise the Lord yet we got folk that good preachers that preach will p tell people everybody's got to get sick no they don't everybody's got to have uh, you know lack no they don't everybody's got to have troubles no they don't there's a place in God where you can get above the storm and that stuff don't even affect your life anymore can you say amen and most people that talk about that stuff, you know what they say behind it? Well, that's just life. Well, it may be your life, but I don't want it to be my life. And if that's living, somebody shoot me. You can be seated. If that's living, then let us eat, drink, and be merry, and tomorrow we'll all die. It'd be better to be in the ground than to have to do what some folks call just life. Amen. Troubles and trial and storms and gets bad and then they get sick and something they'll say that's just life yeah. well the bible said not just life but life more yes, amen. more abundantly yeah. and that's not all he said the axe is laid that means you're not supposed to deal with none of that stuff it's supposed to it's supposed to be a maturity in god yeah. where you don't no longer have to be uh, you know, don't always find you over in the corner throwing a fit over stuff. Somehow or another, we've got to grow up Amen. in this thing. Yes. And if we grow up, we'll grow out of a lot of stuff. When you grow up, and babies grow up, they grow out of doctors. Right. They grow up, they grow out of onesies. Amen. They grow up, they grow out of them little coveralls won't fit them no more. You can put them on, but they ain't gonna, gonna go very far. Can you say amen? And so a lot of times, it's the more you grow up, the more you grow out of. You grow out of. And you get to the point that your response is nil to none. And everything you do in the kingdom of God requires you to have growth. Growth. Amen. And praise the Lord. Maybe you'll pay attention to learn something this morning. Growth. Coming up. Coming out. Expanding, Joseph, get over the wall. Yeah. Reach out into the hill. Get fruitful. Yeah. Can you yeah. say praise the Lord? Well, glory. Yeah. We'll receive an offering, if you will, this morning. Tithes and offerings given to the Lord as it is our good pleasure to bless His kingdom. Hallelujah. And we speak over every one of you as you're bringing your gifts this morning that the supernatural favor of God will be upon your head. Come and bring it to the Lord in Jesus' name.
Amen. If you have your Bibles this morning, would you open them, please, to the book of Judges, the first chapter. The book of Judges, the first chapter. Praise God. We're glad to see all of you today in the house of the Lord. We thank God for that wonderful move of the Spirit that we've just had in our early service. We thank God for the prophetic words, oh my God, one behind the other, just supernaturally. And then April just flowed right on in the Spirit and taught on these things that the Lord has been saying to us about seeing into the Spirit world and seeing into the supernatural. And uh, last Sunday morning, we had a we had an experience in here, didn't we? Amen. We were locked in there, and all of a sudden, the Lord just lifted this whole congregation up into another realm. And when He did, we began to see into the spirit realm. And my God, have mercy! I went to looking out over this congregation, and I couldn't look at you, for I couldn't see you. I was seeing in the spirit. And we don't always have all of that in the morning service because usually we just minister always to everybody in the evening service. But my God, how many felt that shift when it happened in here? And oh Lord, we began to minister by the Spirit and in the Word of Knowledge. And the Lord began to point out healings and miracles, signs and wonders, and people began to get it. Glory to God. And uh, anyway, I haven't been able to leave that subject entirely. The Spirit of the Lord keeps bringing me right back into some things concerning seeing in the spirit world. And then we got in here Wednesday, and my God, I tell you, the Lord translated us, just put us in a place where the Word came out. And my God, you thought you was in camp meeting on Wednesday night. Glory! Hallelujah! And the more I get into prayer and seeking the Lord and intercession, the more I see just exactly that God has is doing something in this very moment, this very time. And how come Hoshima Handala Mahaya? It's the sweetest, most glorious thing. And uh, I want to start in this book of Judges, the first chapter. I want to read uh, verses uh, 1 through, I think I'll stop at 3. I might read one more, but I want to at least get these first three in. After the death of Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. We always talk about send Judah up first. This is where it comes from. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. And Judah said to Simeon, his brother, you come go with me. You come up with, with me into my lot. And he said, Behold, uh, uh, that we may fight against the Canaanites. And I likewise shall go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. Glory to God. They asked the Lord who to send. And God said, Send Judah. And Judah said, I won't go by myself. Now that's a lot of principles of that in the Word of God. If you're familiar with the book of Judges, you know good and well that Deborah woke up and prophesied and started singing under her palm tree and said, Arise up, they right, and lead thy captivity captive. And he said, I won't go unless you go with me. I want, hallelujah, two's better than one. One put a thousand to fly, two put ten thousand to fly. Can you say amen? And so she said, he, he said to Deborah, go up. She said, I'll go up, but you better know one thing. The Lord's going to deliver this into the hands of a woman. And God is delivering it into the hands of a woman. His bride, his church is beginning to come into that overcoming life. 
and experience the ascension gifts because that's exactly what they are. In Ephesians 4, that's a direct quote from the prophetic word that Deborah gave to, to uh, Barak in, in Judges. She said, lead thy captivity captive. And in Ephesians 4, the Bible said that he, before he ascended, he descended into the lower parts of the earth. And he gave gifts unto men, but he led captivity captive. And the gifts he gave unto men were the apostle and the evangelist and the prophet and the pastor and the teacher. And he didn't give them for self-exaltation or names and nickels and noses and titles. He gave them for the work of the ministry and the edifying of the church and the perfecting of the saints to grow up a body. Glory to God. A body. And see, the one can go do it. But that ain't how it's working in this hour. Somebody's getting ready to say two's better than one. We need a we need a, this body to come on in. One person can't handle this end time move. It's going to take a body of believers. The one day shows over, folks. God ain't even moving in that arena. He's not exalting somebody up above another. He's uh, he's exalting one man, all right, but it's a many-membered man. It's a corporate expression of the living Christ. Christ, part of Jesus, is not singular. Jesus is singular. He's the Word made flesh. He's that man that walked this earth. But the Christ part of Him is that anointed part of Him that is dispersed among His many-membered body. And that anointing flows in apostolic, apostle, apostolic. We need to get apostolic in the church. Lay it on our hands. Pointing in a direction. Having a part in power. Get dominion exercised. Glory to God. Producing powerful moments in God. Apostles, leaders, raised up, sent ones who have revelation in their life. Amen. We need all of them. And they're not ranking. Because Jesus was all five. And many men and women in this hour flow in multiple positions of ministry. The prophet can be a pastor. The pastor can be an evangelist. The evangelist can be a prophet. The prophet can be an apostle. They can all be teachers. You see what I'm saying? It's the full hand of God in the church. Glory to God. But three words. This is what I wanted to give you that the Spirit spoke prophetically to me yesterday morning when I got up and went to prayer. <coughs> Three words, these three words the Lord gave me in my spirit so strong and I thought I'd have to write them down but I ain't wrote them yet. He wrote them on me and I hadn't forgotten. The first word is transfer. The second word is transition. And the third word is transcend. Those are three words the Lord gave me to minister to you on today because the first word is, we, is transfer. We're in the transfer zone right now. God has laid something right in our lap, right in our hands. Glory to God. And since He's laid it in our hands, there's going to have to be a, hallelujah, a transition. Because what we've been given requires us to move into a deeper dimension in God. Into a deeper realm of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And the third word was transcend. Because what He's given us is going to take us beyond anything we've ever experienced before in God. Praise the Lord. And so immediately when I got up to pray this morning, the Spirit kept saying over and over again, the people asked the Lord, who shall we send up first? Who shall we send up first? This is a transition place. And let me tell you something, folks. Joshua had the same thing happen to him because the Bible said Moses is dead. Yeah. Now that in itself is so mystical and, and mysterious, it's hard for the believer to comprehend that because Moses was caught up in a realm of glory that's second to none. And when he came down out of the mountain, wished not that the skin of his face shone like that of an angel, and the Bible said some glory took a hold of him in that mountain that it wouldn't even let him get old. When he was 120 years old, his eyesight was not dim. And his physical forces were not abated. It's kind of hard for a man like that to die when he won't get old. Well, glory. I said it's kind of hard for a man like that to die when he won't get old. 
Boy. Something, something crazy there. He can't even get them eyesight. He don't even need reading glasses. I'm not, I'm not quite 40 yet. I have got many more days to go, but I have to have reading glasses. He didn't even have to have reading glasses. He, his eyesight was not there. And yet God stood him on top of Mount Nebo and said, you're not going in because I told you to speak. And instead of speak, you smoke. And I want you to stand on this mountain and look into that promised land. And you're going to look from here and see all the way to the other borderline of it. And yet you could go today and get on Nebo and look and you wouldn't see nothing he saw because he wasn't looking in the natural realm. He was looking in the supernatural. His eyes were open to a whole other world and he was able to look from one place and see to the other place. And I'm telling you, God is bringing an hour in the church today where we're not just going to see our little petty things in front of our face, but we're getting to the Nebo experience uh, where the Holy Ghost is going to open up a supernatural eyesight in us and we're going to see from the beginning all the way in the end, we're going to have a complete picture of what God is saying, what God is doing. We're not going to operate in bits and portions and measures anymore. Hebrews 1 said, God do it sundry times, uh, diverse manners. You know what that says in the Amplified? A little here or there, bits and portions, God spoke through the prophets and the apostles. But in these days has spoken unto us through His Son whom He hath appointed the heir of all things. I want you to know now that there was a spirit of revelation that came on his eyes. And he looked beyond all of the mountain of ne Nebo where he was and looked over into by the Holy Ghost. And when he came down off that mountain, the Bible said God took him back there. He told them all, I'm not going in, but I'm transferring it. It's going over on to Joshua. When it goes, ooh, let me tell you, back in Numbers, the Bible said Moses was to give out from trying to make all them people happy. You can't keep y'all happy. You can't even keep yourself happy. It takes a Holy Ghost to do that. If I went with everybody else and started uh, serving you a meal every meeting or donuts, you'd want glaze instead of powders. You'd want cream instead of jelly. Everybody, we'd say this little statement around here, uh, as a rule, man's a fool. When it's hot, he wants it cool. When it's cool, he wants it hot. I was saying that back there yesterday. He always wants the thing that's not. Are you hearing me? It takes the Holy Ghost to run this thing. You can't run it on programs. You can't run it on time to draw this group and that group because when you draw this group, that group will get jealous of this group and this group will want to know why that group's doing it. It takes a move of the Holy Ghost to bring this thing together. It's not enough just to have some kind of charade that looks good on the surface. There has got to be an inner working of the Spirit of God in your life. You can go through all the charades and then your life will still play out the way it wants to play out. It'll look good on the surface, but it'll erupt like a volcano. Every time you turn around, you're having to deal with carnality and strife and envy. But when the Holy Ghost starts doing the work, something on the inside lines up with what God's Word is saying. Are you listening to me? That built a work of the Spirit. Moses was about to wear out totally. Jethro said, Moses, you can't handle this load. It's too much for you. You're not going to be able to handle it. You better ask God something to do. You better ask God to send you some help. You better ask the Lord to send some of these people around here to, to, to be leaders. And the Lord said to Moses, take 70 choice elders. Put them in the tent with you. I'm going to come down in that tent and I'm going to take, there's going to be a transfer. I've got the old son of Ahia. I'm going to take of that spirit that's on you and I'm going to put it on them. 
Let me tell you, layman, church people, saints of God, anytime you're sitting under anointed ministry, don't just let it be a little good service where you hear a good word, but believe God to make a transfer in that meeting where that very word and life and anointing and power that is operating right now gets in your life and starts to operate on you. The Bible said the Lord took those, Moses took those 70 in there and sure enough, just like God said it, he began to pull that anointing out of Moses and disperse it among the 70. And after he dispersed among the 70, they come in and said, Moses, Moses, wait a minute, we got troubles. What's the trouble? There's two brothers wasn't in here in the meeting. Well, what's the problem? Well, you know that spirit that got on them 70? It reached out of these curtain walls and got on them too. Really? Yes, they're running in the street prophesying the anointing. It's all over. And you want to shut them down? Moses said, I would to God that all of the Lord's people were prophets. I wish all of his servants were prophets. Don't shut nothing down that the Holy Ghost is stirring up. Let him do his thing. Let the wheel turn. Let the creatures fly. Let the living words come out of their mouth. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The whole earth is filled with His glory. I want to tell you now, your circle, my circle, His circle, her circle, that's coming to an end. There will be unity if there will be anything or there will be no move at all. You can run with your cliques, you can get your cliches, you can rub who you want to to get to the top, but that ain't how God promotes nobody. Promotion don't come from the east or the west. It comes from heaven itself. And if you'll operate in the gifts and move in the Holy Ghost and lay hands on the sick and obey God every time He moves in your spirit to do something, God will have somebody in that crowd, somebody at that meeting, somebody will come in this church and say, my God, where have I been? Why didn't I know that they are sent from the Lord? They didn't come because you begged them. They didn't come because you got on the street and talked them into it. They came because the living Word of God moved on their soul and brought them here. And people like that, you don't lose. Paul said they went out from us because they were not of us. Or John rather. And if you've got to fight to keep folks interested, they ain't interested. And if you've got to always have a new gimmick and gadget to keep them giving, they didn't want to give in the first place. I don't need nobody to send me blessed nickels, blessed uh, green claws, or holy water from Russia or anywhere else. I already, I'm, I'm a giver. I'm going to give because I want to give, not because you coax me into it. Are you listening to me? If you give me a free CD, I'll play it, but I don't need that to get me on board. If that word's there, the anointing's there, the Spirit's there, I'm on board. Do you see what I'm saying? There's a transfer zone. There's a place where you get in position so that whatever's operating in that hour is going to begin to operate in and through you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so that's why you need to stay around anointed ministry. And when you leave this house and you're not here three services a week and it's other days of the week, you need to continuously play and, 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 and download and listen to anointed ministry. And don't just listen to everything coming out of here. Find people that are anointed. And let them bless your soul. There's some safety zones. There's some people you can just pretty well always know. If you turn them on, you're going to get blessed. If you turn Brother Jake's on, you're going to get blessed, folks. He preaches more on accident than most do on purpose. Can you say amen? Amen. There's a lot of good ministers God has raised up. They're preaching the goodness of God. Yes. And it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? Steer clear of all the end time doomers and gloomers. Right. All the folks that says it's falling apart. Turn them off. Amen. Because if you listen to them, you'll be wondering and you, you'll start trying to label every bad thing that happens. No, let the spirit of Moses get on the 70. God didn't put the spirit of 10 other men. He said, Moses is I, who I call. He's a prophet. Like unto God, I'm going to put an anointing on them. I'm going to disperse it. I'm going to, I'm going to transfer it. There's going to be a transfer here. So what's on him comes on them. Now, of course, the greatest transaction of that is what's on Jesus now operates in the church. On a greater measure, it transcends. 
It transcends what you know to be normal ain't going to be normal very long. Because you're stepping into a transitioning zone and what begins to operate on you is going to transcend yesterday's anointing. And so that you don't shut them down because they're prophesying. Two of them outside of the circle will bless God. Maybe two more get it. Maybe five more get it. Maybe 20 more will get it. Maybe I'll get up tomorrow and I won't have to deal with nobody's troubles. That's what he was thinking because he was. they were killing him. They were killing him dead because he was sitting as a judge over all them people and millions of people were there and thousands were coming daily and saying, what do we do about our dead grace? What do we do about my sister-in-law won't speak to me? What do we do about my... I'll tell you, hallelujah. <laughs> and if you're not careful, churches today will turn into that same thing. Instead of having a spiritual move, it'll be babysitting club. Well, glory. Yes. Try trivial stuff that'll just blow away if you'll leave it alone. Yes. Becomes hardcore discussions. 99.999% of all counselors done under the Holy Ghost anointing in the pulpit. Yes. Most counseling today is not godly counselors practicing human psychology yes. in a Holy Ghost church. Yes. The gifts of the Spirit are there for that. I don't have time to sit for an hour and listen to you argue over what you think's right. Because what if I don't think it is right? Then you're going to leave saying I'm wrong and I'm going to leave saying you're wrong. Ain't nobody got the answer but the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has got the answer. Can you say amen? Well, you're blessed. So transfer, everybody shout that word, transfer. transfer. Now, I'm going back to Moses because the Lord wouldn't even, I mean, it didn't even happen right. In the Bible, when old men died, they got down, their children got around them, they died, and then they buried them, and then they mourned over them. God wouldn't even let Moses lay down and die in front of them. He said, no, he's coming over here with me. Where is he going? Over here on Nebo. What's over there? That's where I put him in that round. <laughs> where he could see in the spirit. Well, all we know, we don't hear about his, uh, we don't hear about him giving up the ghost. We don't hear about him spatting or sputtering. The only thing we hear is God buried him. I don't even know where God buried him. I don't know whether God buried him in the mountain or buried him in himself. The only thing I know is I get all the way to the New Testament when I'm just about through reading the Bible. I get in the book of Jude and something happens in the spirit world. War breaks out like crazy and, and Satan is his angels are warring against the Lord and his angels and the subject of the war is the body of Moses. The body of Moses. Sure, he wore over that. It's a body he couldn't kill. It's a body he couldn't make sick. It's a body he couldn't make die. It's a body that he couldn't get old. And something happened. He got up in the glory. I hope two people can get a hold of this. There's a glory that can emanate from your life that makes every enemy you've got so jealous they can't stand it because you're prospering when they don't want you to and you're walking when they want you to fall and when they want you to give up, you're just getting your second wind. Glory to God. Hey, don't you let nobody run you out of nothing folks you're children of the most high my lord you have an anointing and an ordination on your life don't you be pushed nowhere you that's a prophetic word for somebody you stand on both your feet in Jesus name you take your firm stand you know God has spoken to you you know God has promised you my God he's not slothful or slack concerning his promises the word of the Lord to you today is to rise up and let your voice be heard you have stifled back long enough to say of the Lord you have held back when I put the fire in me yay hold back no longer but loose that thing which I have put in me and be silent no more saith the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the Lord is saying to me that some of you have silenced your gift uh, and silenced your anointing and held back uh, preferring others and others ain't doing it. Well, the Lord would say unto thee, I have lit thy flame. I have stirred thee up. Now rise uh, and go in my name. Hey, raise your hand and praise him. 
him. He come a shandala mahaya. Oh, hold up, oh, she da bahala mahanda. You're holding back and God saying move. You're staying and God saying go. You're sitting and God saying rise up. You have held back long enough. Glory. You can't apologize for what God is doing in you and through you. Moses can't help he wouldn't die. He got in the glory. There was war. And the Lord spoke and said, Satan, the Lord rebuked me. You ain't there just some things the Lord is getting ready to say. You ain't putting your hands no deeper into this situation. I'm calling a supernatural halt to it right now. I want you to know it's going to be so different as if you went out one minute and it was snow covering the ground and 60 seconds later you went out and there's flowers all of that's how fast. God's going to make some things spring up for use in your life because you're in the transfer zone, folks. It's, oh, it's not a matter of you trying to earn it, get it, pray it through, fast it off you. No, sir. It's going to be a supernatural act of a Holy Ghost. God is getting ready to say, transfer time. Get off that train. You're getting on another train. You rode that track long enough. It's been the same for too long. It won't change because you hadn't changed directions. But the Holy Ghost is pulling you off of one track and setting you on another track this day and you are going to ride out the destiny. Hallelujah. You're going to come into the abundance of the vision that God has given me and has put on me. You're on the wrong track. You rode that train long enough. It's transfer time. I'm getting how happy if I have to be like the old cowboy movies and jump out of one car into another while it's moving. I refuse to lay in the mundane, repetitive old world of carnality and death, robbing me, destroying me. Glory to God. God had an answer to keep Moses alive. He transferred that anointing. Get off that track. Get on another train. I see that in the spirit, folks, just like them old movies used to be. Remember? When them runaway trains and somebody come down with another one to rescue them. They didn't wait for it to stop. They took a leap of faith. Go right over in the other one. I've changed horses in the middle of the street before. I've started preaching one message before and it wasn't here. I didn't tell nobody. I just got on another track and let the Lord have His way. And some of you in your life, God is requiring you this day, this day, to get out of one car into another car and start riding in another direction. Let me tell you something right now. I love every one of you, I'd fight for you. If, if somebody come up and started bashing you, I, if, if necessary, I'd throw them down for you. I love you that much, but I ain't gonna dry up for none of you. I'm not gonna die spiritually for nobody. I'm not going to let nobody kill my joy. I'm not, no way, folks. Listen, you got to be that way in life. And that's what the transfer is all about. I have to believe that God is able to supernaturally, through the Holy Ghost, impart something into me that will absolutely stun me, will, instead of stunting my growth. Glory to God. It's going to give a spurt to my growth. I... Uh, you know, I hope I could say it this way. If the Holy Ghost does have a height chart on me, I want my mark way up here. And I don't want it to take me 20 years to achieve that. I'm not here to achieve. <laughs> oh, come on, shut up my eye. I'm here for the Holy Ghost to impart to me. And that's exactly what happened with Moses. He went through a strong transition. We don't know all that happened getting him from earth into glory. You can't discern it by the natural because there are no natural evidences to discern. All they said was God buried him. Whew. We don't know where he dug the hole. Don't know how deep it was. Don't know if he even dug one. We just know he buried him. Woo! <laughs> and we know he made it. <laughs> oh, glory, because... 
<laughs> a couple of thousand years later, several thousand years, Jesus takes Peter and John and James into a high mountain. He prays till he prays himself over into the glory world. When he got in the glory world, who showed up? Moses standing up. Ooh, glory. On one side and Elijah on the other. Well, two of God's transitioners. Two of God's uh, uh, profile prophets. Uh, of apostolic men who overcame the natural. Who in spite of like passions prayed world shaking prayers. Who looked in the face of mean kings and their wives and prophesied, you ain't going to rule this land any longer. Men of great renown, not because that they came from the right place, not because they, 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 they operated, you know, in the right realm of people all the time. Because yeah. some of the time they were operating in the middle of pure unbelief yeah. and doubt. But they rose above it. They transitioned. They transferred. Glory. And because they transferred, they transitioned. And because they transitioned, they transcended. They went beyond. I don't want God to lay a heavy anointing on my life so I can be found here five years later sitting in the same rut. Still needing money to pay my bills. Come on now. Still trying to understand the scripture I've been looking at for five years. Still trying to have a good prayer life. No, 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 no. I am transferring because I'm transitioning, but I'm transitioning so I can transcend where I am now. I will not remain. That's the way you have to look at it. I refuse it. And so the Lord came to Joshua after Moses was dead. And it, it, uh, uh, he started talking to him. He said, Thus saith the Lord, no enemy will stand before you. Mm -hmm. Nobody will stop you. Yeah. You're fixing to prosper, Joshua, like you ain't never prosper. I will make your way prosper, and I'm going to give you great success yeah. Yeah. everywhere you go. Hallelujah. Be of good courage three times at least, he yeah. said to him in that first meeting, conversation. Be of good courage. Yeah. Be bold. Hallelujah. Be very courageous. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. The ultimate promise was as I was with Moses, so shall I be with thee. And then, and then the Bible says that, that, that uh, in the third chapter, Joshua got up and they were at Shittim and he said, get up from here. Get out of here. Leave here. Glory. Don't hang here. I'm moving you. I'm positioning you. You're getting mobilized. I believe right now God is mobilizing an army in this earth of believers that will carry the word like they've never carried it before. It will be the trumpet in Zion, the alarm on the holy mountain. It will be a people so mighty and strong that they sound, the Bible said, like horses when they run through this earth with my word. Cities won't stop them. Walls won't hold them. Everywhere they go, there's a fire burning. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost is going to burn up everything in their path that will try to hinder their way. And after they pass through the land, there ain't going to be nothing but a garden of Eden left. God is going to do some restoration work. He's not just restoring the tree and the branch and the, and the, and the limb and the fruit. He's restoring the years. I'm getting ready to get some years back. I ain't your old glory. Hallelujah. I'm not just going to get a little blessing. I'm going to get the blessing. I'm coming under full covenant with God. Everything that he's took, he's bringing back five times greater. He's going to restore. Somebody say, amen. Why? Because he said the years. I want to tell you something, folks. That would depress you more than anything to think about the time you've blowed. But even God said, I'll restore that. I'll let you live that many years longer. But those years won't be full of locusts and canker worms and palmer worms and caterpillars chewing and gnawing up your inheritance. I'll restore it. I'll restore the years. I'll restore the joy. I'll restore it all. All of it. Hallelujah. And let me tell you something, and this is, a, this is good for you to hear this. 
when you start with another, don't think everybody that you run to and tell, I believe the rest of the I'm going to have them, but don't think everybody you tell that to is going to say, oh, glory to God, hallelujah. Let, let me pray with you. I believe it's going to happen. Some people don't care about stuff like this because it's not their mentality. Their mentality is them and nobody but them. Oh, number one. People who are self-absorbed never understand restoration. Never. Amen. And when you speak of things such as that, all they see is their present condition. That's what they rehearse day in and day out. I heard, I'm mad, I'm mad. Oh, gosh. Uh, God bless these uh, that, that post that come out the other day that said, I love it, I should have shared it to my page, but I don't do that, that stuff good. My wife does it real good. But he said, quit using church people for an excuse. Not to go to church, they messed up people in the bar, and you go there all the time. Quit riding the same, like that poor old excuse, I wish you could see it. His clothes is tore off of it, it's hanging about dead, and here you dragging in every week. <laughs> Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. You know, eat worms and die. Born in an eclipse. Ain't seen sunlight yet. Always on the down and the low. Sometimes you have to make your own joy. Sometimes you have to shout when you don't want to shout. Sometimes I talk in tongues not because I felt a good jolt of the Spirit because I want to run something off. It won't shut up. Sometimes my tongue talking ain't glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes my tongue talking is get out of here and shut up and leave me alone. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to any voice coming in my head that's trying to lie to me and tell me I can't have what God said I could have. Get up. Some of you are right where Joshua was. I don't mean this, but I mean it. You're in Shittim. You've got it everywhere. You can't stop it. It's piling all around you. I didn't say it. I'm quoting the King James Bible. But I'm telling you, the Lord said, get up. Get out of here. Remove yourself. Get away from it all. There is something better for you in God. He's calling you to it. Do you understand it's better? It's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. It ain't going to stay like it is right now. I say that to a thousand situations I could address this morning, but I cover it with a mass confession. It's going to get better and better and better and better. Hallelujah. It's going to change. It's going to turn. I come on, son of a heart of God. It's going to shake everything. And make it land in my favor. Woo! So he went among them and said, Sanctify yourselves today. Because tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. He said, Eat and drink, get ready. Because the third day we're getting out of here. I want 2,000 cubits between you and that ark. I don't want your eyes on the water, I want it on the ark. I'm anointed a priesthood that their feet are, can, can go right up to where that river is spilling out over its banks. I want you to know, I'm preaching now, prophetically to you, I'm telling you that your feet are no more going to run away from things, but you're going to run right into it. And when they hit that water that's overflowing out of its bounds, trying to drown that. You know what Jordan means? Death. Death is trying to overflow its banks. See, you don't understand. You think death is caskets and flowers and funeral homes. No, 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 no. That's the result. Death itself ain't in the cemetery. Death and life are not in the graveyard. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. Death works in a lot of areas. We're like the man that while they, he slept, the enemy sowed the tears. We're looking in one direction and it's piling up in the other direction. Death is your negative talk, your carnal thoughts. You're giving in to what tries to take you over. Anything that opposes the life flow of God is death. And, and, and so what do I say to the death? I say God's anointed me. 
How do you know God's anointed me? Because I bear the ark. How do you know you bear the ark? Because I know what the ark is. It's the glory of the Most High God. It's the presence. It's the Shekinah. It's the glory. And I know who that is. It's Jesus. And I know when John was in Jordan, he took the ark back into the Jordan. He took him right down in there and buried him right there in the waters. And when he did, more than the river opened, the heaven opened. When the heaven opened, the boy, <laughs> somebody say amen. Yeah. So what am I going to do? I, I, I'm believing in this hour there's an anointed ministry that I don't care how bad it's overflowed. I don't care how bad it's flooding. I don't care how much it's tried to rise. There's a ministry in this hour that believes in the true ark of God, the Shekinah glory, the right now manifested presence of Jesus who said, I am the resurrection and the life. And we are not running from nothing. We are going to walk right in the midst of it. Jesus didn't run from sinners. He ate with them. He didn't turn. He, he didn't run from the funeral procession. He went and touched the bier. Yeah. And they thought that surely he couldn't be a priest of God because he was going to defile himself. No, he didn't defile himself. When he touched it, the boy wasn't dead no more. Somebody's got to lay hands on it. Somebody's got to touch it in spite of how bad and putrefying and infected it looks. When my wife and I were in India, we were in Andhra Pradesh, and they said we were going to a leper's colony and we're going to minister. And, and, and we went in there, and sure enough, about 150, 200 lepers out there, it's beautiful girls, 18, 17 years old, but they don't have a top lip, and they don't have nothing but nubs for hands, and they don't have nothing but nubs for feet. And, they, and, I, and I tell you, sometimes it's hard to get somebody with a good hand to half mass, praise the Lord. Them little old girls that beat them nubs and wave them in the air and pray, God, they convicted me. I'm going to go down and cry and have a prayer meeting. Amen. Some of you I tell to raise your hand. Half the time you ain't even listening. The other time you praise the Lord. But they was, wasn't they? They were beating them little nubs together. Praise me. We got done with the service that day. Hallelujah. They want a prayer. They want prayer so bad. They'll take your hand off the fellow in front of them and put it on theirs. I said, I, I got in the spirit. I felt the anointing. I began to lay hand on them, curse that disease to die and pass out of their body. One poor little sister was with us. Every time I'd go to touch the neck, she'd squirt that sanitizer on me. Oh, she just got on my nerves. Every time I was wanting to move in the spirit, she was sanitizing me. I finally stopped and said, don't do that. If the Lord woo, is not big enough to protect me as I lay hands and come against this foul mess, then I'm in the wrong business. I've got the wrong God. Woo! <laughs> then afterwards, I was kind to her and said, you sanitize them now. But my God, folks, listen, some things you've got to just say, hey, you, you don't live here no more. You don't dwell here no more. I might have let you have a little free room and board for a few weeks, uh, but I'm telling you, head them up, move them out. Let's get out of this one. I ain't staying here another night. That river said, I don't care. God has raised up a prophetic people in this hour that when the feet touch the brim of that water, all of that mess that stood in your way is going to run this way and run that way and God's going to cut a path of deliverance. And you're going across on dry ground. Now bring all that over to where we read in the same scenario, only it ain't Moses has transitioned, it's Joshua. And you've got to understand, every time a saint of God transitions, the people of God ought to transition. Because as it goes in the natural, it should always go in the spirit. Mantles never leave the earth, anointings never die. Elijah went up, the mound came down. And it's that way, folks. When Jesus ascended, whew, he gave gifts unto men. There was a transfer. There was a divine power. He said it. He prophesied of it. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. I appoint unto you a kingdom, even as he hath appointed unto me a kingdom. Come on. If I cast out devils with the finger of God, and the kingdom of God has come unto you. Then he turned around and said, Behold, I give you power over serpents and scorpions. Amen. So there's a transfer. Now Joshua's transition. 
And the Bible says the first line there that everybody, the average Bible reader, one, one who never takes time to study misses a very important part there because the first verse is just a normal English phrase. They ask the Lord. They ask the Lord. But if you ever knew anything about Hebrew language, you'd know that the only phrase they ask of the Lord that's only used in Samuel and Judges. And the only time it's used is when they ask God by Urim and Thummim. By Urim and Thummim. One means light, one means perfection. Two stones, they were in the high priest uh, ephod. That's why when you ever heard David say, bring me an ephod, he wasn't just wanting to play dress up. He was wanting the Urim and Thummim anointing to come on in the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of Him. Some say that when they inquired the Lord, one stone would move in the direction it was supposed to. Others says it lit up. I say it did both. Every time the Holy Ghost moves in me, I move out and light up. I say it shook and it shined. Praise God. He said, well, I don't understand what that is. Well, that's not important. you got something better now. Yeah. you got the Holy Ghost yeah. on the inside of you. It doesn't mean they just asked one another, and it doesn't just mean they said, Lord, what do we do now? No, they got in the Spirit and sought God till by revelation. He showed them what to do. It happened all through the book of Acts. They would pray and the Holy Ghost would say, Separate unto me, Barnabas and Saul, the task that I've chosen them. Then they would take them, lay hands on them, with what they called the presbytery. Now some people grab that and then they make a big old religious thing out of it. And before long they almost got popes and cardinals in the, in the Pentecostal church. I don't love you, the devil don't either. Popes, I mean Pope. Presbytery is just simply mature people yeah. in the house of God who flow in the supernatural. Yeah. You don't have to put a robe and a necklace on them <laughs> and set a mitre on their head. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sick of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My God, look, we're not here to try to revive Romanism. We're here to produce Holy Ghost atmosphere. Yes. God Almighty. Praise the Lord. Amen. All that stuff is man-made, yes. not God-ordained. Yes. Praise God. need to seek ways to provoke me, but yea, you just flow in me. You just operate in my anointing, operate in my gifts, operate in my power. There'll be promotion, there'll be a lifting up, but yea, let it be the king who saith unto thee, come up hither, raise not up nor lift up thyself, but let thy gift make room for thee, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just operate in the Holy Ghost. Just let the Urim and Thummim start talking. Hallelujah. 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 For I've already gone before thee and set things in array that you know not of. Yea, if you'll tune in to me and listen to me, I'll draw thy feet to the right path and you shall run into blessings you've never dreamed of, saith the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some things the Lord's already set up. Already made it happen. Now, I was fixing to tell you, uh, but I'll, I'll hold my thumb there and put my finger in another spot. And when I run out of fingers, I'll quit. Not really. But lest the summer all, God sent him to listen to Howard Carter preach. Now, Howard Carter was the uh, was a British brother that flowed in all nine gifts. He didn't flow in one, two, or three. He flowed in all nine. Now, the traditional church teacher couldn't have but up two, three, but that's a lie. That's not even in the Word of God. 
you can have all nine if you got the Holy Ghost. You got all nine. He not twins. Amen. That's like tongues and interpretation. Some of us let it be two at the most three and then folks to go to count them saying you can't have oh that is what he meant it meant before by the time they give the third message somebody ought to have an interpretation right. amen yeah. so brother carter flowed in all nine gifts brother summerall went to hear brother carter he stepped out and they were he was ministering at a bible school campus they come out on the sidewalk and brother carter was standing there talking to some preachers Brother Lester Summerall was only 17 years old. He wanted to meet this brother. He went over and reached his hand out, took him by the hand. The minute Brother Summerall took him by the hand, he started to say, I'll go with you over the highest mountain. I'll go with you through the deepest valley. I'll cross seas and, and all this stuff with, with you. And, and then when he dawned on him, what he just said, he said, oh, brother, just just forget that I said anything. Well, Brother Carter reared back and laughed a big old hearty laugh. He said, come with me to my office. He took him into his office, reached up on the shelf, pulled down a little notebook, opened it up, and there wrote on a paper, said, at some point in your ministry, a young man will come take you by the hand, and he'll say to you, I'll go with you over the highest mountain. I'll go with you across the deepest seas. Wherever you go, I'll go. I'll carry you. I'll live. And all of it was word for word verbatim what the Spirit had spoke to Brother Carter. Amen. Now, whenever that got through with, Brother Summerall just went and forsook everything. His mother thought he was crazy. They all thought he lost his mind. He had an old suitcase with a rope tied on it for a handle, wouldn't even stay shut, and he got on and said he's going to uh, meet Brother Carter. Hallelujah. And God had him miraculously provide the money for him to, to take off, and he did it all along the journey. He followed him. They were going to meet up in another country. He followed Brother Carter all the way to California. He'd get to one spot. The Spirit would tell him, go here. He'd go here. He'd get off and find somebody and say, you, have you heard of a Brother Carter? He was just through here yesterday. And he followed him all the way till they met up on the other side of the world. Do you know what happened? It was through Brother Carter that Brother, Brother Summerall got acquainted with Smith Wigglesworth. Wow. And Smith Wigglesworth, before he left to come back to America, transferred something over onto him and wrapped both his arms around him and wept and cried and cried tears all over him and asked God to put the same burden that was on him upon that. Now, I'm talking about the ministry of Urim and Thummim. You can hear from God. You, you can be led by the Spirit. Can you say amen? My, my granddad was always accused of moving too slow. Yeah. But he believed in waiting until he heard from God. Yeah. He yeah. always waited till he heard from God. And of course, people would come into church and they'd be, but you've got to understand some folks, a pastor has to have wisdom right. and understanding. And the truth is, glory to God. Well, never mind the truth. I'll leave that alone. I don't make them out on Sunday morning. But you can't lay some responsibility on on just everybody. It always accused to be in the family church. Yeah. Amen. Well, I can't help it. That's right. I I know what they gonna do. <laughs> and I've got some of you that's just yeah. as close as family. Right. And I know what you're gonna do. Amen. And I trust you. Amen with with, with any position here, know you'd be faithful to it. But I'm not letting no, unless the Lord shows me in a vision, I'm not going to just turn things over to some fly by night. You wouldn't want me to if you was in your right mind. You wouldn't want me to. That's why you got to have your and thumb of ministry. This whole leadership's fixing to fall on somebody. It's fixing to be turned over to somebody. Joshua's passed from the scenes, transition. Moses transitioned and he went into the hands of Joshua and he was what? Did the Lord say successful? Well, for it to be successful again, we're going to have to hear from heaven. Yes. And when they sought the Lord by Urim and Thummim, the Lord said, send Judah. Yes. Judah is a he whom thy brethren shall praise. He's a sleeping lion. That's what the prophecy said. And none dares to rally him up. Glory to God. If they ever do, he'll let out a praise. That, that, glory be to God. Hallelujah. 
The Lord's been speaking to us about the roaring lion. There's a roaring lion in this hour. The book of Joel chapter 2 said God will roar out of Zion. Amen. And we've been studying that man in Revelation 10 who put his foot on the sea and what on the earth. Amen. And the Bible said he rode back and roared like a lion. And when he did, seven thunders began to prophesy. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Woo, seven thunders. John said, let me write that down. The Spirit said, oh no, you can't write that down. That got to be caught by revelation. It can't be read or understood. Men are drawing up their charts, but it can't be read or understood. It'll take a Holy Ghost revelation. I believe this is an hour when God is going to send out thunders in this earth. By God, He's going to break the barrier. He's going to break onto the scene with a noise. Amen. After he heard the thunders utter their voice and prophecy, the Bible said he raised his hand, the mighty angel did, and touched heaven. There's some intercessors in this earth getting ready to put one hand in that supernatural world, one foot on this earth, and we're even going to minister to that tossless sea of humanity out there that are so tossed and driven that they don't even know who they are, but God's got a man that can stand in the gap and make up the head, an intercessor's anointing that can speak heaven's words to earth's dilemmas, and the sea will lay down and be quiet. And, and he declared what? That time shall be no more. It ain't got nothing to do with calendars and clocks and days and months. The Lord was saying that which is eternal will no longer be held back by the, 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 the limitations of time. Time will no longer hold you back from the eternal purpose that God has ordained in your life. That the phrase time shall be no more in the Greek terminology means it shall not restrain any longer. It shall not hold back any longer. Folks, you're coming to an hour where all the seat belts are coming off. All the cords are being cut. All the fetters are being loosed. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. You're moving out in something that's beyond time. They call you and say you're going to lose that car in 30 days, but God will transcend time with eternity, give you a right now miracle, and you'll go down there next week not only pay the payment, you'll pay the whole thing off in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Supernaturally, God is coming in saying, send Judah. Send the roaring lion. Let him wake up and praise me. Let him stir himself. And when he stirred himself, what did he say? He said, I won't go unless Simeon, my brother, goes with me. Simeon means hearing. 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 I'm praising for a reason. I'm going to hear from God. I'm going to hear from heaven. God's going to give me direction. He's going to show me what to do. And so they went up and God gave them the victory. But if you can just get that in your spirit this morning, that if God has transferred, you're going to have, hey man, <laughs> you're going to have to transition. Because where you're at now ain't big enough for, for, for what God has envisioned for you. Can you say praise the Lord? I mean, honestly folks, somewhere or another, you got to believe you was born for more. Amen. You weren't born just to stay in your little house yeah. with your little issues Amen. and your little troubles. Yeah. You was born to ride high, dress high, look high, be anointed high, prophesy high, preach high. The issue is God wants to bring you to a place in your walk, earthly walk that you'll never have to worry about nothing the rest of the days of your life. If that's true, He can use you 100% for kingdom work. He can use you 100% for kingdom work if you don't have to climb down and fight stuff that ain't got a business fighting. He can't use you 100% for kingdom work if you're always having to go back down. And some days, uh, I had a Glory, a trowel in one hand and a sword in the other. But he said, I ain't leaving till I'm done. When I'm done, I'll come down. Nobody wanted on that wall. That was a lie. That letter was a lie. Sam Ballard didn't want to help him. He only wanted to come around because it was succeeding. And before it ever succeeded, he said a fox would tear it down if he ran on it. 
But now that it looked like it was a success, he wanted to run in and take the glory and take the credit. And Nehemiah said, I don't need their help. I don't want their help. And they came back again and said, this time they said, we don't just want to communicate through letter. Come down off of that wall. He said, I'm doing a great work. I will not leave this position to deal with that which is lower than me. At some point, you believe God will take care of it. Without you going down there and getting in the middle of it, I need to learn this lesson. I'm preaching now to myself. I can't fix everything. I would if I could, but I can't. I can't do everything. I wish I could, but I can't. I can't build everything. I just can't. There's only so much in the flesh that I can handle. But oh, I want to be in a realm with Him. Where when I am in the midst of the work of God in His kingdom, that I don't feel obligated. Not by guilt or condemnation or any other device. To leave that high place. Now that can even be as, as, as minute in detail as I want the boldness to go in a room and I don't care if 10 people I love are telling me a bunch of unbelief. I want enough boldness that at the expense of offending them to look at them and say, y'all need to hush and you need to zip it up because you're sitting here speaking death and wanting me to pray life. And if you want me to pray life, you've got to talk life. Oftentimes, due to the fact that we don't want to offend we oftentimes swallow a lot of stuff that bring us lower because we're afraid of the offense. But I want to tell you something, it's not an offense really for the Word of God to straighten you out because the Word's always right. And you need to be able to look at some people sometime and say, if you don't button your mouth, you're going to get worse every day until that confession that's coming out of your mouth changes. You see what I mean? There's a lot can be applied to this. It can be something so fast and big as you deciding I'm not going to run over there and get in the middle of a big brawl. Or it could be something so simple as you saying to somebody you love, look, I love you, but you're going to have to change how you talk Amen. around me. Yeah. There are things, everything that can will. And everything that you allow will always repeat itself. Yeah. So at some point, you've got to lay the axe to the root and say, listen, I love you. I've told people before, I love you, but let's talk fishing. Let's don't talk the Bible no more. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because they weren't wanting to hear, to, weren't wanting to get into a discussion that the Lord could show us something. They were wanting to straighten me out on everything. So I said, look, I love you, but me and you won't be discussing this matter no more. Does it work sometimes? Not always, but sometimes. Sometimes it makes you mad. But then again, everybody's mad at something. Yeah. So you're just giving somebody up for rest. Yeah. I'm telling you this thing's bigger than us trying to just just fix these little trivial trap. Yes. That's, that's the way I teach forgiveness. If you forgive somebody, just shut up over it yeah. and let it die. Yeah. The worst thing you can do is go over there and start getting into details and bring it up. All you do it is stirring it up again. If it's over, then shut up about it. Let it be over. Let it die. But you know it ain't all way. You, you know that if you're married. <laughs> you surely thought you let it go. But you're getting a spat. And that old enemy will come crawling up in the eardrum. And who ain't you tempted to speak of things 10 years ago. Because I go all day cutting and just let it, I need to let it go now. No, because I'll have y'all arguing with you. But <laughs> you know back yonder, and you know then, you know this. Amen. One time my granddad had a brother, and every Monday morning he would pull up in the yard to tell him he was leaving the church. And one morning he got him got up to meet him and he just wasn't in the you know, he was in a, a, a mood that wasn't just exactly sweet. He just had it up to here. 
And the brother come in and said, well, I guess I'll have to leave the church. And old brother Edward said, well, brother, that'd be just the thing for you to do. He said, just go ahead. I think you're better. He never said from that day on again that he was going to leave the church. I believe that a lot of what people are doing are just trying to keep from dealing with the fact that God is calling them to something better and they don't want to make the transition. I don't like moving and you don't either. Packing up and shipping out and loading up and transferring over. But my God, if I was given a house across town look like a mansion, you think I wouldn't start wrapping up them vases and getting them played. God's giving you something better than a mansion this morning. A whole world of a supernatural where you can flow in the Holy Ghost. He's calling you out of the flesh, calling you out of pain, calling you out of sorrow, calling you out of all the old repetitive stuff that's hung on you. And me and you have got to not love it enough to hold on to it. We've got to lose it. Let it all fall off of us. Reach out into the new day of God and lay hold of the supernatural. Father, in the name of Jesus, deliver every one of us from a rut. Everywhere in our life that we've got into one. My God, by the Holy Ghost, get us up and stand us above and let us see what we're missing. Show us the beauty. Show us the glory. Show us the power that we're ordained to walk in. Oh my God, we're, we're, we're here now with the Urban Thumb. We're hearing from heaven this morning. Therefore, we know that it's transfer time and it's transition time. We don't want to stay over here another night. We're going to rise up because we'll sanctify ourselves today, tomorrow the Lord will do miracles among us. We're sanctifying our mind. We're setting apart something in us that will only think on the goodness of God and what you have in store. We refuse to be moved by what we see. We focus on what we don't see. We focus on the supernatural this morning, God. I have prophesied as you have commanded. I've given the scriptures as you have commanded. I've delivered my soul to this body this morning because I believe it is a time of picking up and moving out. In the name of Jesus, by the Holy Ghost, today I pray that not one word fall to the ground. Every word will bring forth a productive harvest. Uh, let us see ourselves not only in the Spirit, but by manifestation right here in the natural. Start coming out of some long dug tunnels uh, that we've been seeking to be loose from. Bring us into the light. Push us right on out until heaven is so bright around us. Glory to God that we see. I pray for my brethren and my sisters in here today that are facing issues with their jobs and their employment. I pray right now for the favor of God and the light of heaven, the light of revelation to shine on them and for you to give them further instruction and lead their footsteps in what to do. I pray for every one of the saints of God that have a sickness or disease and infirmity or pain in your bodies right now. If you got any of that, raise your hand and receive a miracle. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power, oh glory to God, of the living word. We command that sickness, that disease, that infirmity, that ailment, that, that pain come out of the people of God right now in Jesus' name. Come out of their body. Come out of their limbs and legs. Come out of their organs. Come out of their bloodstream. Loose them right now by the power of the living Christ. Set them free in Jesus' name. I pray over every mind that is in this house. Every mind that is battling. Every mind that has a roaring uh, enemy that will not shut up. They're just talking defeat and, and despair and destruction. I say by the power of God in Jesus' name, unbelief come out of them. Fear and doubt come out of the people of God right now. Loose their minds uh, from your clutches. Loose that vice uh, that is gripping their thought world. Loose that fetter that is bound itself to them and let the mind of Christ start flowing in their thoughts right now in Jesus name 
I say to everybody in this house this morning that's got a calling and a gift in and that's all of you. I say to everybody that's got a ministry and a place and that's all of you. I say by the Holy Ghost be anointed this day to fulfill a higher dimension in your call, in your walk. Oh, glory to God. In your spiritual relationship, be elevated, be lifted up, be transitioned this day into a higher dimension of the Spirit. I pray for the scales to fall off of our eyes. I pray for the veil of humanity and flesh and mortality and corruption to get thinner and thinner until we fully put our head over in that supernatural world. Open up our eyes and see as God sees in Jesus' name. I pray over you today that every prophetic word that has ever been released in your life will pile up on you and begin to happen just one right behind the other. I pray for wealth. I pray for health. I love O'Shea. I pray for what you call your dream world to become your real world in Jesus' name. You will no longer dream about succeeding. You will succeed. You will no longer dream about prospering. You will prosper. You will no longer dream about having your kids in church. They'll come in here and sit down on that pew beside you in the name of Jesus. All of your kids are promised to you. And in the name of the Lord God, I declare every one of you have a scarlet cord of promise hanging out of the window of your house that declares that you and your children, uh, you and your house. Uh, amen. In the name of God, I claim every one of them saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, talking in tongues, uh, running around this church, dancing, shouting, prophesying. I declare and decree in the name of Jesus uh, that every one of them that's in bondage is loosed uh, and every one of them in darkness will see the light in Jesus' name. Delivered by your power. Delivered by your spirit. Look, we're coming back here in a few hours. I don't want no decrease or decline. I want to fly higher. And I don't want to have to get in there. I want to be here when we get here. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus, we say these things are done. Amen. How many know you've heard from heaven? How many know God is setting you up for a miracle? How many believe you might leave here and run into it before you get in your car today? That pain may have left your body. <laughs> Glory to God. You're healed. You're blessed. You're prospered. You're healthy. You're whole. You're the children of God. You're the favorite of the Lord. We love you. We bless you. We'll see you back here this evening at 6 o'clock. Amen. Bless you. Praise the Lord.